I'm a mathematician. I learned coding very late in my own studies. I'm very bad at it. Many of my students come from all kinds of backgrounds. All our code is messy. So I actually started coding quite late on. It was only a few years ago I started. You can find a lot of help on, on Google, colleagues help as well. And then yes, we built this tool that now is out there on the internet. I started training to be a psychiatrist. I then decided to take time out to do a PhD looking at brain images, cognitive um, sort of assessments of, of patients. In order to kind of do that imaging analysis, I really had to learn how to code across various different programs. It's like learning a language coding. It doesn't happen overnight. I had a question to a specific problem during my, my doctoral degree, and it was something that you could use computational linguistics to prove. I went to a summer school to start coding. I uh, learned some online courses, and I Googled hell of a lot. What we mean by open code is code that is accessible to everybody worldwide. So if in my lab we write a software package to analyze particular images of cancer and or images of tissue and spot cancer cells and we publish this, in some projects it's completely open from the beginning and you can pretty much watch us develop the code, do it step by step. It will look terrible in the beginning and better at the end. Some other projects, it's different. We, we keep them behind a password and we're not making it public until we actually submit the paper and have to present it to the reviewers. It really depends on the application and the constraints like intellectual property issues. One of the great things about code being open is that it stops scientists from doing the same thing twice. One person can code for a specific situation um, and then somebody else can come and be able to, um, with their permission, use that code rather than having to write it from scratch. One of the experiences that got me into being more aware of reproducible research is something that happened in my own lab. We had a key piece of work which we just couldn't reproduce anymore because we had not written down all the steps how we had produced it. And that was a killer because in the end we just had no evidence of the whole scientific work we had done for several years and this paper never got submitted. And so for me, being reproducible about my lab's work is just a safeguard against these really big disasters which could have a really negative impact on my careers and the careers of the people who work with me. Myself, I actually released my code before my paper was accepted. I was interested in getting my work out there to help other people to sort of stir up this field and get more people working in it. From collaboration, you start to see things in a new light, in a different light, and from that perspective, you might then start going down avenues that you never thought to explore before. Through that, you get to meet lots of different people coming from lots of different walks of life. Discipline shouldn't be a barrier, and the goal is to bring people together from different faculties, creating a hub for a computer scientist to sit down with a sociologist and a lawyer and an engineer and uh, realize that they all speak the same language. The more that we share code, the more it's able to evolve. It allows that natural development and evolution of that code to be the best it can possibly be and to fit a variety of different applications, which wouldn't necessarily be possible with just one person producing it. There is infrastructure to share code. There is large repositories which are already set up. You need to learn how to use them. So there's a training aspect there. I use GitLab. So it's a version control repository. So if you're really interested, uh, you could follow my work day by day, how it, uh, how it evolves. I'm really lucky that where I work, there is somebody in post whose um, purpose is to help everybody else with knowing um, what platforms are available to be able to, to share code and data and to give advice on how much to share, which is particularly important from a kind of clinical perspective where we involve patients um, and the ethical implications around that. I think there's a fear in people taking your code um, and you not being able to you know, prove that it's, it's actually your work that's been taken. But everyone has to balance out how they feel it necessary to release their code. I know some people only release their code once they have a paper accepted, so they have the security that when they release their code, it's not going to go up without some sort of paper backing it up. 
where I come from, I think publishing uh, is a way of uh, protecting uh, that you can claim credit early. You're claiming this is my field, this is my contribution, I open it up, it's unlikely that someone, uh, someone else will take exactly the same route as you would like to for the research article. So I would encourage uh, anyone to be conscious about the threats, but use publication as a way of locking and uh, putting some security over that work. The other fear, I guess, is people critiquing your code. And that maybe is something that puts people off initially from submitting their code onto sites like GitHub. But actually, I took a different approach in thinking of saying, OK, no one likes making mistakes, but actually I'd rather someone point out a mistake in order for me to fix it. A young colleague from, from Poland uh, just dropped me a text and said with great enthusiasm that I'm trying to use this database. I'm using these SQL queries as a structured uh, computational query, and I'm expecting a result, and I'm not getting it. After relatively short uh, it was about a three-hour frustrating search when I found I missed one bracket. I run the code, uh, went through all the, all the steps following the chart which I created. I got a second version of the, the same database with everything A next to B and B next to C as it should be. One of the biggest challenges I found um, when I was trying to make my code accessible to the public was um, trying to get um, GitHub to to talk easily to the program that I use in order to, to kind of write my code and evolve my code. I think also because open coding is really a framework in progress, there are various platforms that can be used and actually it takes quite a lot of time as an individual to learn which one best suits you and then also how it can link and sync with all your other programs. So the culture has indeed changed over years. I review lots of papers and looking at the code is one of the first steps that I do as a reviewer. If I can't see any code, I just don't trust the paper. And so one of my big complaints will be that I'm not able to judge the quality of the work because I, I'm not able to see how they actually got their results. If you go into a research project with the anticipating that you're going to make everything open, then you probably approach it in a very different way. Every institution should have support and training for junior researchers to learn about open science. And I think probably over the next five to 10 years, pretty much everybody will be making all their code and their data open.